Welcome to this episode of the Arizona Thomas Tours. Today we're in Cinder Lake. Why are we in Cinder Lake? Scott and I, I'm gonna step over this way. This, in this place, we're gonna travel about a couple miles back and we're gonna try to find where the original astronauts actually did their training. They set up an exact replica of where they landed on the moon back here. So we're gonna go back here and try to figure out where it's at. Stay tuned. freezing cold. We made it to the top of something, but I don't know what. We didn't find crater, what are we looking for, one or two? One? One. Uh, number one. But uh, windy, 39 degrees. Trying to find crater number one, where uh, they practiced the Apollo moon landings, but uh, we haven't found it yet. It's absolutely freezing out here. It's 39 degrees. The wind is kicking at least at 45 miles per hour. Uh, we're gonna head back uh, to crater field number two and try to set up the drone. In the 1960s and the 1970s, Northern Arizona likely earned a de facto Emmy for its part in the space race. Its volcanic terrain and geologic composition put it near the center of the lunar training program for the United States Apollo missions. Apollo astronauts, including Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, imagined the Northern Arizona landscape as the moon. And the other thing they did out at uh, Sunset Crater that was really cool is they took this construction equipment, in this case it's a backhoe, and they basically excavated out these holes that were simulations of craters on the moon. Before the first astronauts ever made it to the moon, they had to have somewhere to practice, and thus Cinder Lake Crater Field was constructed. Chosen for its prosperous volcanic gravel, the former volcano provided a more than suitable analog for moon rock. However, to accurately simulate the surface of the moon, scientists mapped a portion of the satellite's craters and proceeded to create an exact replica of the pothole field in Cinder Lake. Using hundreds of pounds of dynamite, NASA scientists created an identical field of craters in a carefully ordered series of blasts. Once the fake moon field was constructed, the astronauts were free to try out their lunar rovers and other equipment from the safety of Earth's gravity. They went out there to Sunset Crater so they could kind of break apart the rocks and practice their geology techniques. Because you probably are aware by the, by the time they would get to the moon, uh, they would be bringing back uh, samples of um, rocks from the surface of the moon. And so this the craters have been seriously degraded by wind and human use, especially at Crater Field 2, now a popular destination for off-roaders and ATVs. Crater Field 1, a little further removed from the most popular off-road areas, remains better preserved. From the early years of the space race into the 21st century, Media Crater has been frequented by NASA and others in preparation for trips to the moon and future travel to Mars. Now
NASA trained in this area in 1969 in preparation for planned Apollo moon landings. Conditions at Meteor Crater and the surrounding regions are similar to those found on the moon, and NASA uses the area often as the official training site for the Apollo astronauts. It is believed this piece, like many fragments, broke away from the main 300,000 ton meteor as it entered the atmosphere and after separating struck the earth away from the main impact crater. Meteor Crater is the best preserved impact crater in the world. I'm up here videoing. I meet two uh, gentlemen from Germany, and that's where my ancestry is from. Oh. All from Germany back into the 1400s. Oh. So, uh, can I get your name? Hey, I'm Robin. Oh, no, no, no. No. One more time? I'm Tom. All right. It's good to meet you guys. up here at the peak of the crater. Wind's gusting at about 35 miles per hour. It's unbelievable. What do you think? It's pretty cool. Scott says it's pretty cool, pretty nice. One thing about this place, it's very, very busy. So if you come out, just expect a lot of people to be out here. Look, I was stationed in the Azores in the 90s. And I thought it was windy there. It is unbelievably windy here today. Gust of 42 miles per hour and it's consistent. Canceled all their outdoor tours today. That's kind of bummer. An actual Apollo test capsule and the astronaut wall of fame are the highlights of the astronaut park. Oh, but this is actually the silhouetted feature. That's actually Neil Armstrong. And once again, he's over in that building that um, is here on campus. All right, we're up here at Lowell Observatory. Pretty nice, absolutely freezing up here. Uh, we caught the last video on the moon, which is the main reason I came up here, is to uh, find out about the moon. I say it's cold up here, but it's nice. It's pretty it's cool. Cold it's cold and short amazing. sleeves and... He's tougher than me, what can I say? Long sleeves. That's, that's I'm better looking than he's tougher. Yeah, I'm tougher. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely freezing out, though. That's right. Moon landing, um, the inspiration by the president really uh, came as a result of a speech he made in the early 1960s. We Jews to go to the moon. <laughs> we Jews to go to the moon. Kurt Lowell purchased this back in 1896, 123 years ago, for the cost of $20,000. And then he had this big dome structure uh, constructed to house his new telescope. Now, the last big professional use for this telescope was the um, Apollo okay, okay. Um, But uh, we still use it for public programs. In the 60s, a team of scientists and artists used the Clark Telescope to create detailed maps of the moon in support of America's manned voyage to the moon. Apollo astronauts studied these maps, and some even used the Clark Telescope for part of their training to go to the moon.